Okay, I'm Dan Goman. I'm going to be talking about the LLVM code generator. This is the back end of the compiler as opposed to the front end that Steve was talking about. Can we be a little louder, please? Okay. Thank you. So the first question I'm going to answer is what does the code gen do? What is a code gen? Louder. 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 Okay. Yes. <laughs> code gen, from an LLVM IR perspective, is essentially a very large analysis. It reads LLVM IR and it produces machine code as output. The goal is to produce as efficient as possible machine code for some definition of efficient, and also to run as quickly as possible uh, for use in uh, very fast compiles as well as JIT compilation. The LLVM code generator has a bunch of different responsibilities, and you can place them into more or less four main categories. There's the preparation phase. Um, this is actually consists of a couple of LLVM IR transformations that operate on the LLVM IR directly. Um, so in some senses, they're not part of code gen technically, but they are part of the LLC tool, so I'm mentioning them here. They do some simple transformations that um, help out the later phases of code gen. The next main category of things that happen in code gen is the selection DAG phase. That's what I'm going to be spending most of my time talking about today. Um, this phase does instruction selection as well as the scheduling. After the selection DAG phase comes the registry allocation phase, um, and Evan's going to be talking more about that after this. And then finally, um, output, either to LLVM IR, or I'm sorry, assembler source or machine instructions in memory ready to be executed currently. So looking at the selection DAG phase, which is where I'm going to be spending most of my time, the input is LLVM IR, and I'm going to walk through an example of this LLVM IR code. This is a simple loop. Um, it does some simple operations that I've selected because they have some interesting properties in code gen. So the main data structure is the selection DAG. You can see the graph on the right or the left here. Um, I don't expect you to be able to read that, but this is just mainly a, a bit of detail, and I'm going to be zooming in for various parts to show some detail. So the main <coughs> node in the selection DAG is the SD node. Um, Nodes can have multiple operands, and in the, in the code gen, those are called SD uses. And unlike LLVM IR, um, in the selection DAG, nodes can have multiple values, multiple result values, um, and we call those SD values. This node has only one. Okay, I'm sorry. Talk, slow, talk slower and louder. <laughs> the selection DAG is a dependency graph. Um, the black arrows that you can see in the graph are data dependencies. The blue dashed edges are chain dependencies. Um, chain dependencies is selection DAG lingo for control and sequencing. So when we have a load that must follow a store, we have a chain dependency that indicates that, uh, for example, this load over there and the store over there uh, must be sequenced. At the top of the graph is an entry token, which is essentially the token that indicates the very beginning of the block and in the middle of the graph, we also have a special node uh, called the token factor, which is a way of having multiple chain edges be combined into one uh, so that it can be conveniently depended on by another node. The LLVM selection DAG is somewhat unique um, among compilers in that we use the selection DAG. There's no sequence of instructions at this point. In order to get from this form into machine instructions, we have to do scheduling. There's no option to avoid scheduling because all we have here is a graph with no order. The selection DAG does automatic CSE. So when you create a node, it will check to see if there's already another node with the same operands and the same opcode, and it will reuse that node instead of creating a duplicate node. Uh, the selection DAG is lower level than LLVMIR. We're going down to machine code progressively or lower. And all the graphs that I'm going to be showing you today are graphs that are produced directly from GraphViz. And these are the graphs that we use when we're working on this. Um, so this is what we see when we're working on CoGen. It's very much these pictures. The selection deck uh, has six main steps. The lower step, which is producing the selection DAG, looking at the LMAR's input, and writing a selection DAG as output. The combined phase, which is a peephole style uh, optimizations and simplifications. Legalize, which lowers operations that are not legal for the machine. The com another, another pass of the combined phase to do more optimizations. Then we do instruction selection proper, and then finally scheduling. 
So I'm going to walk through each of these steps in detail. The first step is the lower phase. And here we're taking our L of M I R on the left and translating into our selection diagram on the right. And I'm just going to highlight a few key pieces here. If we have an add, this turns into an add node in the selection diag. One of the things to note here is that our selection diag is only looking at one basic block at a time. So in order to have values that are live across more than one basic block, we actually use virtual registers. And we have a special copy from reg node to indicate that this add is using a fee value. It's using a value that's potentially coming in from outside the block. So we use a virtual register to represent that. Here I'm showing a load. Loads are lowered into a fairly straightforward uh, load nodes. Note that the load node has both a chain input and a chain output for dependencies that the load has and for other things that depend on the load. And then finally I'm showing the there's a conditional branch. This is a, a loop and this gets lowered into a conditional branch in the LFMIR. At the bottom of the graph we have the graph root which is basically a special node indicating that this is the the bottom of the, the graph. And it also happens that we created a constant zero somewhere along the way. We make a trade-off uh, in constructing in the graph. Right now we, we opt for simplicity over the optimizations right away. We have the build phase, the lower phase is aiming to be as correct as possible and right now as simple as possible. And we leave it to the combined phase to optimize things like this away. So I've highlighted a few things that the combined phase is doing for us in this graph. Um, in this conditional branch, it turned out that when we created the condition and then when we created the branch, we decided that the condition was going the wrong way. We wanted to invert the condition. Well, the build phase just created a simple XOR by one to invert the Boolean condition. Uh, and the combined phase recognizes that and it'll actually reverse the condition and simplify that to a simple branch. Uh, the combined phase is also responsible for canonicalizing the graph. So it'll turn this multiply into a shift. The next phase is the legalize phase. In selection DAG speak, legal refers to an operation or a type that can be directly represented on a machine. So this is a type that will fit exactly into one machine register or an operation that can be done as a single or a small set of machine instructions. So I've shown this is a 64-bit add and right now we're, I'm, in my example here I'm doing compilation for x86-32 which does not have a 64-bit add instruction. So Legalize is responsible for splitting this into two 32-bit adds and for using the condition codes of the x86 to, carry, to handle the carry bit. We have two special nodes, add with carry. And